Hello, guys. Welcome back to Clinical Scoop. It's Dan. It's Monica. It's Dr. Al Jazeera. No Chris Sauber today. Chris is busy. Got his hands tied. We're doing. Uh, we're deviating. It's a deviation a little bit from what we normally do. Normally, we look at clinicaltrials.gov. We analyze some studies. There's just been so much chaos this week in the news that. Basically, the only thing that made headline was the Pfizer vaccine. Everything else was about the election and about COVID resurgence. So the vaccine was positive news. We're going to talk about the vaccine and different vaccine studies. I know that Moderna is also going to get their vaccine approved most likely in the next few weeks. So now we're going to have several vaccines for COVID. We can talk about those things next week and the week after. But for now, we wanted to talk specifically about doctors looking to get into clinical research because Dr. Al, Chris and I did this podcast the other day and it's never been a better time to be research naive physician than right now because there's so many studies because of COVID, all the resources are being allocated to COVID. So we need, we still need doctors to enroll for Alzheimer's studies, for postpartum study, for cancer studies, for everything, everything that's not COVID. And sponsors are not getting the numbers that they need because all these doctors are have all these projects. And uh, a lot of them are tied into, a, a lot of the sponsor resources are tied into COVID projects. And so if you're a clinician out there, physician looking to get into research, now is the best time to do it. Monica talks to doctors every day. Dr. Al talks to doctors every day. I talk to doctors almost every day. I'm about to do every day again pretty soon. Uh, but what do you think about this, Monica? What have you been seeing from the research community out there? I actually think uh, we've been receiving more, um, more attention, definitely. So a lot of doctors are uh, know now more about research than they did before, and this is because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there are more reception, and uh, and then not just obviously doctors is the main thing, but also for people that wants to get into the industry, there is no better time than right now because there are a lot of uh, opportunities too. So so I think the market is perfect for everybody that wants to be in research, and obviously we need more doctors, we need more uh, people uh, working in research, mm -hmm. and we de well, we also need more. Uh, diverse type of, uh, uh, you know, p personal working in research. Latinos in clinical research. This is why we created that group uh, with the clinical research yes. circle, Dr. Al. Dr. Al, you talk with doctors on a daily basis. Do you think doctors care that now is a good time to join research or not? I don't think they care about this. I, I, my question to you and Monica, every day you talk to doctors, what's your impression about recruiting doctors? to research uh, circle, how, mu how much you were successful. Monica, you talk to doctors every day trying to recruit them to the research. How many did you recruit in the last week, two weeks, month? So I think they know more about it right now, but still, it's still hard to, to get them uh, to commit to research because what happened is I think Doctors also have the wrong idea about doing research. They think they have to commit all their time or they think uh, they are not going to be able to to work uh, in their separate own uh, private practice as well as having research. Well, they can do it uh, in the same place. They can enhance their practice. And this is actually like they diversify in their own business. If, if a doctor think about business, this is a really good way to diversify business within the same uh, place. Because at the end of the day, if they, 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 they have to go to their own practice every day, right? Or pretty much every day. They have all the stuff already. It, will be, it, it won't be a much change if they add a clinical research coordinator and if they have to see uh, some extra patients here and there, but it's not like not like time consuming. It's not it's not as large as if they was like uh, seeing patients, you know, like a regular 
type of patients they, they take with one of these patients one hour in the visit, correct? Well, in research, the part that they have to do is not as long. It's probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and that's it. Yes. And it's not every visit. I know, but they don't know that. They think that w once they get to research, they will be, they have to commit to it. And like this, even... Bombarded. Yeah, bombarded. And uh, even for me, okay, when I try to I have a study, like for GI, I try to get a doctor for that, for GI, I will have a very hard time to have this doctor to do, like, come and sign papers in my office, yeah. like, regarding, okay, I have the patient, I have the protocol, I have everything, I I have a PI, I'm asking the PI, okay, I'll come today, I'll come tomorrow, I'll come today, I'll come tomorrow, and this is how it is, because just they're very, very busy, and they don't find the time to research, so my advice, if you want to recruit a physician, make sure the number one he is uh, committed or he have a plan to do that okay a plan to be involved in research as at least to do the minimum that required for him as a pi okay me as you a sub pi in most of the study okay i that's why i try to do but i need the pi like for certain meeting for certain things and this is where having so, hard time to so I have a question for you, Dr. Al, because I I do talk to physicians also, and doctors tend to be uh, skeptical people, and um, probably with good reason. Um, so they, how do you get past their – they already have the preconceived notion that research is going to take a lot of time and it's going to be a lot of headaches for them. So how do you personally, when you're recruiting doctors – approach them because you are a doctor yourself so for you should be easier no and because they're easier for me because i i i offer them to be a pi because of their specialty i'm not okay for a certain type of study but i'll be the cp sub pi and i will take over all the regulatory and everything else that done for for them they, they have to uh, see the patient as in a regular visit fill out the note and then I'll I'll file it I'll upload it I'll do everything else through my clinicators hmm. so that's the the only thing that in time yeah but you know you know these doctors because they're skeptical no matter what you say they're going to believe what they believe anyways so what how do you approach them do you agree with them or do you tell them no do you try to argue and say no this is you know, you have it wrong. This is not how it is. That's a personal thing, you know. Most of the doctors that I recruit in my to my clinical trial are my friends. So I take them as a friendly approach with them. And like this, they are my, the, the one I, I eat with them, I, I, I talk to them about the patient. We discuss cases about that. So that's the way the, to approach them. It's not somebody that I go and... Pick up the phone. I need the, you. I need you to be a PI and yeah. try to approach him this way. No, that's and probably so the best. Them, I, that's probably the best strategy, even if you're not friends with them. Like uh, you know, when we're gonna go to Arizona to start a clinic. I mean, instead of approaching them head on, like a lot of people, like me and Monica, and we don't do this ourselves, but a lot of people in our position, when they go recruit doctors, they d they don't want to take the time to get to know or explain them so they just go head on like this and the doctor can sense okay this person just wants to move too fast and uh i think a better approach would be the slower approach you know maybe taking them to lunch or something explaining like doing multiple meetings before so that they can at least get to trust you a little bit and most people don't want to do this because it takes more time right and uh you know, you could be wasting time just going to lunch instead of actually signing on any doctor. But I think that's the best approach to do it is instead of a head on attack, it's to like, you know, like come from the flank like Napoleon Bonaparte did in his, his wars. You know, <laughs> he was in the middle. <laughs> big armies came all around and he distract here and then it fought on this side. So I think somehow as with the doctors, too, you got to give them like dinner you know here's a steak 
and then you come on the other side and say, okay, well, here's my book or here's a, here's a synopsis I got. Um, some things my like friend, that. My friend don't have time to do research. They're going to have time to go for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we took I doctor think, to I... dinner. Me and Monica just yeah. took one to dinner. Yeah. Uh, I know. <laughs> You've been reading too much history. <laughs> <laughs> so that won't I, work. I... The Napoleon strategy yeah. won't work. Oh, it may. Some people, like I tell you, it's, it's different from each one person to the other one. It's, it's different. Mm-hmm. As long as you have the... You have the motivation to do that. That's the number one. You have to have motivated physician to do that, and then you can. I think we need to educate the doctors too, just because, like I say, they have a preconceived wrong idea about it. And this business, at the end of the day, like I was mentioning, in addition to their own business already, is is diversifying their business, and it will give them more more. Uh, I think it will improve the clinic because of their um, office, uh, you know, the private practice, because they, are, they will be offering the patients an extra uh, opportunity to do something with their health. <clears throat> oh, what yeah, do you, you think, know. doctor? Dr. Al, are you there? <laughs> Ah, I'm there, but I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I've been doing this for a long time, Dad. Okay, you know, I'm trying to approach the physician in, in multiple ways. Okay, and mainly I agree with Monica and as a di- diversifying their business is one part, but also mm-hmm. you have to have the physician that is motivated to that. Well, you brought up a good point, and I've been doing this 15 years now, and uh, I've approached I don't know. Uh, multiple dozens doctors, maybe hundreds. Okay, every single doctor that I've interacted with is a different approach. And I think that um, there is no one solution. But you, Dr. Al, one thing I remember I talked with you about when I first met you, you were telling me something. I think you just, before you met me, because you saw my videos, and then you read my book, and then you contacted me. So so you already knew me. Um, before I came, uh, you met with a, like an SMO people. And I remember one of the first things you told me was, do you know anything about these guys? And I said, no, I don't know who that is. I, I remember. Very good memory then. Very okay. good memory. So then exactly. Told- I was meeting another SMO and, and exactly. I was trying to negotiate with them to talk to of them and, and everything, but it didn't work. And... At the same time, I was talking to you about how to do the business with you and everything. Yes, yeah. very good memory. Though. So what was it What was it specifically about those people that turned you off? Because I think that's going to help a lot of people uh, watching. That's so great. what was it that turned you away from those people? Because you mentioned it to me, and I never even met you before. Wasted time. They're, they're like I had with them in, uh, almost in – in a week, two or three meetings, me and my partner, and at the same time, there is nothing comes out of meetings. Okay, they just want to do this, want to do this, want to do this. Okay, let's get to business. Okay, we'll do business. Okay, there was no clear cut what they want to do exactly, and they have all the plans. They want to do phase one. They want to a building to do phase one study. They want to do X, Y, Z. They want to do okay. Let me see things that crystallize to do it. So you didn't believe them, or uh... no? I believe, but they they never like materialized for me any anything out to start with. Okay, so they didn't actually do anything. Um, they didn't present you anything that you thought was no. practical. No. Okay. Nothing practical that really can work with or do clinical trial too. They brought, they brought me a couple of tissue study that they've been collecting, they've been doing for many years. They want me to be involved in tissue collection a lot. Mm-hmm. So That's how should problem. they how should they approach you? If you were them and you were approaching yourself, how would you have done it differently? The way you did it. We have this product we have this product. Okay, we're gonna do this with you. This is our this is what you need to do. This is what we need to do and that's how it is. 
Okay. What if you don't have right, a study? Have like, what if you don't have a study, but you want to talk to the, this doctor about future study? You know, but you don't have any studies to offer. You're just talking about, hey, you want to be a PI. How would you do this? Hey, you want to be a PI? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to ask me, what, hey, what's PI? I tell them, hey, PI is principal of this. <laughs> hey, you want to be a PI? <laughs> exactly. Okay, good. So that's a good start. So, hey, um, do you know do you know anything about research? Do you Have you considered doing research? Something like yeah, this? So the physicians, they know about research, okay, but they don't know to approach it, how to do it. And as you said, the misconception about research in general with physicians are time-taking, time-consuming, difficult to can make money, but it's difficult to recruit, difficult to do, and there is a lot of legality about it, and you have to be, you know, a lot of misconception in position is di different. The one who did once or twice, the one who did never did any research. Okay? Okay. So, yeah. That's, that's another thing about the, uh, the illegality about it, and at the end of the day, they are not doing anything different than being a doctor when they are part of research, take it, like over, uh, I mean, overseeing patients, making sure that patients are safe. That's pretty much the major uh, responsibility, correct? I mean, in research. So it's not, it's not different than being a doctor. No, I, I, I think it's, it is being a doctor, but this is different type of doctor. Okay, I have a, a lady today who came to me and She's on half month study, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, she's been on treatment. She finished two cycles, and at the, and I, I restage her now according to the protocol. I have to restage her, and her tumor progressed from two point seven to three point seven, okay? So it used to be two point seven by, uh, by uh, three. Now it is three point seven by three. So it's almost like more than 30% increase in the size for this tumor. So I have to take her off the trial. So sitting with her, spending time with her, explaining for her what's happened, and like this, this is more than just the time that I spend with a patient to tell her that I'm going to start you in the chemo. Okay, I have to tell her why I took out this study, why I'm going to put her on another treatment or any other stuff, okay, and what the side effect of the new treatment. What's the downside? What's the benefit? What's the risk? What's her option? So instead of spending about 20 minutes, 30 minutes talking to her, as a follow-up patient, is spent with her more than uh, more than uh, 45, 50 minutes just talking in general about what's happened and how we're going to pro proceed from here. So that's the time I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But for example, if, if with a regular patient, that the treatment is not working, be doing the. Yes, I would be doing the same. I know, but but you don't see it as no? much uh, as many as we ah, do okay. in the clinical trial. Yeah, okay. that's a good point because sometimes it is like Monica said, less t less time than you would spend at a regular visit, non research. But sometimes it's more times that you would spend with the patient um, as opposed to general practice. So that's a good point, Dr. L, actually. So it's not the, this is not the only thing. Also, like sitting and then and, and consenting the patient, talking to the patient like this, also, all time consuming. When you're going to go and recruit a physician, if you're going to start talking to him about these things and this uh, duties and like this, well, most probably he's going to shy away from you guys. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So you have to approach like, um, I think the Napoleonic strategy still works, but uh, it's a different uh, way to go about it. I, I don't think Napoleonic strategy is going to work. <laughs> <laughs> not on doctors. You guys are too You're not going savvy. to war, my friend. You're going to have a, me a friendly meeting with physicians. <laughs> You're too savvy. You're too savvy, these doctors. They went to medical school. They know. Um, that's good. That's actually good take home uh, for us, for the everyone in the community. Next week, let's see what happens in the news, first of all, because maybe who knows what's going to happen by next week. This year is like a movie that doesn't end. So next week, who knows? Stay tuned to your seats, to your ears. Listen to the podcast. Watch the YouTubes. And uh, we'll do something good for you guys. 
on clinicaltrials.gov and maybe sprinkle a little bit of stock market. We like stock market. We like to, last time I lost money on Biogen. Lovely, lovely time. So that's why I told you never advice about stock. <laughs> never advice. Only do never the advice. opposite of what I do and you'll be good. Uh, no advice. <laughs> no advice. Thank you, Dr. Al. Go to your meeting, Dad. Thank you, okay, Dr. Man. Al. Thank you, Monica. Yeah, we're going to go talk to some doctors and uh, catch you all later, guys. Good luck. Go okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>